and thank you all for, uh, for joining us tonight. This is uh, truly one of the high points of the year for, our, for me and for Jane uh, to share an evening with such wonderful folks and friends and alumni of Marshall University and folks that serve us here in, in the nation's capital. Um, it is truly um, a spectacular evening. And Mike, um, we do a lot of things because we love what we're doing and we believe in the future of Marshall University so passionately that uh, there isn't anything that we wouldn't do. Uh, you heard from Danny D'Antoni and, and uh, Doc Holliday. What I'm proudest of with our athletic program, and, and this is something Mike and I talked about when uh, I interviewed him, I wanted to be proud of every student athlete that came to Marshall University by not only how they perform on a playing surface, but how they live their lives and how they take advantage of the opportunity that God gave them to come to Marshall on a scholarship and earn a college degree and uh, how important academic success is as much as athletic success. And it takes leadership all the way through the university to realize that dream, that uh, opportunity is something that's very precious. And if we don't help our student athletes, if we don't help all of our students take advantage of the opportunity that they've been given, then shame on us. And I told Mike, I said, I want to see us number one in the conference academically as well as number one in the conference athletically. And we're getting there. What really makes me proud is to sit down with Doc and talk about all of the football players, student athletes, who are earning master's degrees while they're still eligible. They're taking very seriously the opportunity that we're, we've given them, and they're making the most of it. And we're seeing that play out all across the university. If you look at Marshall University today, and, and I'm actually finishing up my ninth year, going on 10, and right now we don't see any end in sight because we have a lot of unfinished business. As you look at the highlights and they're being flashed up here on the screen, some of the things that have happened recently, we celebrated a student athlete, uh, Katie Kramer, I believe her name is. Here's a young lady who came to Marshall on a partial scholarship for women's uh, swimming, swimming and diving. Graduated in three years, and then upon graduation, went and swam the Strait of Gibraltar. The youngest person in history to do that. Real class young lady. And what I found about that achievement so spectacular is we have been trying to move the university forward with the idea that we, we expect success. We expect excellence. We don't wish and hope for it. We expect it and we want to imbue that in our students. There is nothing that you can't do if you set your mind to doing it and if you really believe it and expect it. And as Doc will tell you, the biggest transition that I saw this last year with our football team was they no longer hoped to win, they went out there expecting to win. And that's the sign of a transition. And you can call it swagger, you can call it a lot of different things, but the expectation really has to be very deep-seated. Because when you, when you truly expect success and excellence, you will stop at nothing to succeed. When I came to Marshall University in 2005, I laid out a vision for the future of the university, things I was passionate about that I thought we could achieve through a lot of hard work, blood, sweat, and toil. I talked to Drew Kagan uh, most recently at the foundation board meeting, and Drew came up to me and he said, he said, I remember when you came to Marshall. And he said, you talked about all these things that needed to be done and what needed to be accomplished and the goals that you were setting. And he said, I thought they were very ambitious. In fact, they were exceptionally ambitious. But I never really expected to have them see them happen. And he said, you've done almost everything you said you were going to you were going to do. Well, I don't do these things alone. It takes great people working with us. 
living the dream, if you will, believing in the future that we were, we were projecting for the university. The likes of Iran Area, who's our uh, CEO and uh, leader in the foundation, who, and I told Ron this at the foundation board meeting, what Ron has done for the foundation has truly professionalized the, pro, uh, the foundation into a very successful major gift fundraising organization. And it's been through Ron's leadership that we've been able to accomplish that. And Ron and I work hand in glove together uh, on the private side, raising gifts. And then you look at what John Sutherland's doing with the Big Green and Teddy Klemper and Mike Hamrick. When I met with Mike, when I hired him, I said, Mike, I need somebody as an AD who's going to go out and raise a lot of private money because as I look at the future, we're going to be more and more dependent upon private support and less and less dependent on public support. And that reality is happening today. And instead of Mike telling me, well, I guess we've got to go out and sell a few more chairbacks, Mike said, I know how to do that and I'll do it well. And he has. We started out with all of these capital projects having to raise $40 million privately to make them all come to reality. And we're very close to achieving that goal. When you come to campus in the fall, as Mike said, you're going to see a, a university that is literally transformed, and it's continuing to transform. Last October, I challenged the faculty and the staff of our university to begin a long-range strategic planning process that imagines a future 10 years now from now, from fiscal year 13, where we have 90% less funding publicly than we had in fiscal year 13. That's a $50 million reduction in annual appropriations from the state. And if you look at what's happening nationally in public higher education funding, what we put out there as a straw man doesn't seem so impossible anymore. And with mid-year budget cuts last year and another cut this year and a cut last year, the state's reduced our, our support by over $11 million in the last two years. That future, while it was speculative to some extent, may indeed happen. What I like to see, what I'm very proud to see happening on the campus today is the university coming together and realizing that we have to change how we do things and the way we do things, and we have to prioritize what we do in ways that align very strategically with our values and what our purpose is. And that purpose is educating young people, educating people in general. And so as we move forward, we are on a very aggressive plan. We're reviewing everything we're doing. We have a comprehensive services portfolio review ongoing right now, and another one for the academic portfolio. We are working with outside agencies like the Education Advisory Board, who's based here in, in Washington, D.C., and the Gates Foundation, examining everything we're doing and asking the critical questions. What is it that we continue to do that we don't need to keep doing? What do we need to do better? Where do we need to invest? And where do we need to stop spending? We just got a report back from the Gates Foundation and the Education Advisory Board and they reviewed all of the finances of our academic programs. What they discovered and reported to us is everything that I thought we needed to take a hard look at. So we have an outside entity that's actually come in, lifted up the hood, and done a very thorough analysis. And we're going to share that with our teams and ask them to consider what we need to do and some of the changes aren't as dramatic as you might think. But at the end of the day, if we're going to continue to make a college education affordable for students who come from less advantaged backgrounds and to help them succeed and earn their college degrees, we've got to change ourselves, we've got to change our thinking, and we've got to focus on what matters most. And so when you look at Marshall University today, we're light years ahead of where we were nine years ago. In the next nine years, we're going to be light years ahead of everybody else. 
We are pioneering the future of public higher education in the nation. And let me tell you, there are a lot of people around the country that are looking at Marshall University today and what we're doing and asking the question, how in the world are you getting this done? How are you getting your faculty to come to the table to work on these things? How are you getting your staff to come together to make the tough decisions? At the end of the day, it's all about leadership. It's the leadership challenge of today and tomorrow. And I'll put some things in perspective for you. Last year, if you th think about what happened in April, this year, we presented a series of policies, all aligning with what we're doing financially with the university. We're changing the tenure policy for faculty. We're changing the promotion policy for faculty. We're changing the pay raise policy for faculty. All those policies came before faculty senate this spring. Faculty senate passed every single one of them with one negative vote. Why? Because we made the case for how important these changes were to the future of our university, for our vitality and our sustainability. We are undergoing a comprehensive reevaluation of how we budget, the financial controls that we have in place, all looking ahead to developing a model that's sustainable, scalable, and places Marshall University in the strongest possible financial shape. Each year I have the privilege at graduation of shaking the hand of every new graduate. It's one of the best days of the year, that and winter commencement. We also have an opportunity to bring in a, a, an alumnus as a commencement speaker. And this year we brought in Brad Smith from Intuit, CEO and President. He gave one of the most inspiring commencement addresses. But each special event in the spring brings back very special alums like you, who have found success in your own callings. And every time I have a chance to sit down and chat with each of you, you talk about your experiences at Marshall and what a difference that experience and those experiences made in terms of what you're doing today and what you've been able to accomplish. The truth of the matter is there are no limits to what's possible except the ones that we impose on ourselves. And again and again, we find Marshall alums who came from very humble backgrounds, who have risen to incredible leadership roles nationally and internationally. And it all began at Marshall University. And interestingly enough, in a number of those cases, with an athletic scholarship. Over and over again, I hear these stories. Our alumni, to me, are some of the most, if not the most, inspiring people I know because I have the opportunity to sit down and talk to them and they tell me their stories. And it makes me so proud to serve you in this role because of who you are, what you mean to Marshall University, and what you mean to me. I'm so very proud of each of her and every one of you. And I thank you all for joining us today. Thank you.